Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna share with you how we made this wonderful live edge console table. So keep watching to find out more. First thing is we have this live edge piece that we have been letting dry out for over a year now. We had a big, big tree fall in our backyard in May of 2020, and we've been able to make several tables out of that tree. And this is just another slab that we cut with a chainsaw that we're wanting to turn into something. So the first thing I wanna do is figure out how long I want this thing to be. We determined about 50 inches would be plenty. And that also left us with just enough left over on the other end of the slab to turn into maybe another table in the future. Time will tell. So here I'm just using my circular saw just to cut it as best as I can, as straight as I can. This is not gonna be a perfect cut quite yet. We'll get to that. And then the blade did not go all the way through, so I had to whip out my handsaw. This was the, the best for, for this job, and I was able to finish this thing off. The next part is getting most of the bark off. This is very self-explanatory. Just took a wood chisel and a couple wood chisels, some hammers, a mallet, and got all of the bark off as much as we could. And as you can tell, the table has a little bit of a bow to it. It's got a little bit of a wobble as you're watching this. Um, we're gonna deal with that here shortly. Okay, now it's time to flatten this piece out the best that we can. My method for doing that is my plunge router that we've been making several tables with for the past year now. And so what I had to do is I had to make another setup, something that was gonna be a little bit longer than my normal setup. And because this piece is a little bowed, I'm starting with the bow side down and I'm just using some shims on the one side that's definitely, as you can see, it's, it's very much bowed. And so I'm using some shims just to try to balance that out as I'm taking my very first pass with this router to flatten it out. This is gonna be a very tedious process for me. This took several days to to do it's a lot of work the reason why it's so difficult for me is because i cut this from a big big branch with a chainsaw and you can see where some of the uh, indentions from the chainsaw are so it's not a perfectly straight slab if i had some sort of wood planing or wood cutting uh, machinery which we don't have i don't have that and that's okay so i was able to just cut the, the wood with my chainsaw but i'm gonna have to work really hard to get this thing leveled and planed out with my router. Because that first pass was so difficult, I decided to run this as best as I could through a table saw. I probably wouldn't do this again. Um, this definitely did not turn out perfect, um, and that's okay. I just wanted to take off a little bit. I think it was maybe about a half an inch or one inch. I knew that I was gonna take that off eventually, but just so that I didn't have to plane as much as I was. So I sent it to the table saw and took off just a little sliver of it. Now that that is done, we have one end that is almost completely level and flush, especially to the surface of the workbench. And we'll fix that here in just a little bit. So I'm gonna continue doing my routing process and try to get this thing as level and flat as possible. And there you have it. After several days, maybe even a couple weeks of planing this thing, I finally got it to the thickness and the smoothness that I wanted. The next step is I wanna focus on this section here where the bark was, or at least the bark on this end. This is gonna be the front end of the table. So I wanna to try to get this as smooth as possible. So I'm gonna start with my orbital sander. I think I used about 40 grit right here and then just worked with my chisel to try to get as much of the bark that was remaining and any little slivers that needed to be removed from the wood. Having a Dremel like this came in handy. I think there was a couple of spots here, as you can see, that the sand sander was not getting into, so I used my Dremel. And it also kind of created these cool little pockets in the wood that would smooth out the little slivers that I was trying to take care of, but also give it just a little bit more character. From here, it's time to start the sanding process on this live edge slab. This is the most tedious process of all. I think this definitely beats out the routering process for me because it's a lot of sanding. So I started out with a 40 grit and just got this thing as smooth as I could. And as you can see, I make pencil marks here just to kind of know, give myself a little bit of a reference for what's been uh, sanded down well and, and, and it's level uh, so that I don't over sand in some spots. After that, I'll flip it over and we're gonna do the backside. 
Continuing on sanding on both sides, I'll go up to a 120 grit and then from there a 220. So this thing is going to be very, very smooth once I'm done with it. I decided to take my circular saw and go ahead and try to level this out as much as I could. And then for the back side, this is the side that's going to be up against the wall. I took my Craig AccuCut just so I could clean up the back side of this piece of wood. And as I said, this is going to sit up against the wall, this end. And there you have it. This thing is super straight and super smooth on the back side here. So let's continue sanding. Have fun. Lots and lots and lots of sanding. So you, you might think that it would look really good to keep some of these straight edges. I think it looks good, and, but in theory, I don't feel as though it's as practical because there are some little splinters and slivers of wood that if you ran your hand across it without really any regard, you would definitely get a splinter. And so I took a little bit of sandpaper and just smoothed out the edges of this slab just to be safe. I thought about using my other router and just using a roundover bit, but I didn't feel like for this project it would look very good. So I decided to keep it as straight as possible and to just hand sand these edges. Always make sure you keep some scrap pieces of the wood just so you can kind of test and play around with different pieces and different ideas. And that's what I was able to do during this process. Now that the hard part and the most tedious part is over, it's time to move on to the fun part. There was a lot of little holes from all the little bugs that we wanted to fill with epoxy. And we still had a lot of epoxy left over from our last project. So I went ahead and taped it down with some painter's tape. Um, what I didn't show in this clip is I also used some Tyvek tape as well, just to help secure it a little bit more. And you also want to make sure you put some sort of flat surface underneath your live edge piece or any piece that you're filling in with epoxy just to make sure that there is a good flat even surface that the wood is sitting on so that the epoxy doesn't try to seep through the bottom. We didn't do that at first, but we caught it and we were able to put a piece up underneath there. Now it's time to pour our epoxy. We just used a clear epoxy. We decided not to put any color in it. Just fill all the little crevices and all the little holes as best as you can. Moving on to the legs, we decided to go with wooden legs as opposed to a metal leg. Um, we felt like this would be probably the easiest. Please don't make fun of my socks and my shoes, my sandals here. This is, this is me. Don't judge me. Starting out, we thought we wanted the legs to be a total height of 34 inches. So that's what we're starting here with. But we decided at closer to the end of this that we wanted to trim it off. So we ended up trimming the legs down just a couple of inches. Um, we decided it was gonna sit just a little bit too high. So from there, we'll make our marks, go ahead and make our cuts on these pieces. In addition to the four, four legs, I decided to use another piece of wood, another two by four that would be kind of a cross brace between both legs and if you do some research you'll see there's a couple ways of doing it you can do it where it sits on the floor thought about doing that i decided i was going to put it up against the live edge slab instead just so i could use that to secure the tabletop i also decided i wanted to clean up the edges of the two by fours and so i took about an eighth of an inch off of both sides of my legs which eighth of an inch that's about the thickness of this blade from there, the epoxy has dried. We've given it a few days. And so now we're gonna go ahead and do some sanding on this. I took the Tyvek tape off and got all of that put away, thrown away. And then some of it did end up seeping through a little bit. So I'm gonna sand down the backside as best as I can, starting with a 40 grit and then just kind of working my way up to a 120. I also did a little bit more sanding on the backside as well and on the top. We did over pour just a little bit. That's totally fine. Um, sanding it down takes care of it. But anytime I'm pouring epoxy, I wanna try my best to not over pour just so you're not, you're not wasting the epoxy. After sanding, it's time to move on to painting the legs. We decided to paint them black. We didn't wanna do a stain, anything like that. Just a nice fresh coat of black paint. 
This is also the same paint, a little bit of leftover from where we did the wall, from our wall video where we did the, the slab wall. If you haven't checked that video, watch it after this one. We did a little bit of research trying to figure out how we wanted to finish this live edge slab. But we found this online. This is the Rubio Mono Coat, and it comes with an activator as well. I'll put a link in the description box below if that's something that you're interested in checking out. This finish calls for three parts of the, the finish and then one part of the activator. And so we had these measuring cups that we were able to use to, um, to measure out what we needed. From there, we're gonna apply very conservatively and try to get as much covered as possible here. And then we'll move on to using the buffer to buff out the rest of it and let it cover the remainder of the top of this table. From there, the top side dried pretty quickly. I went for a run after this, came back, took a shower, got dressed again, and did the back side of this thing. And as you can tell, it didn't turn out as yellow as we thought it would, um, which we really like. Um, it's not super dark, but it's also not super yellow, which I think, I think is great. I think the, the color of this turned out really, really well. Wrapping up the legs, this is what I was talking about earlier. I decided about seven inches between both of the legs on each side would be plenty of space. And so here I'm using my Craig pocket hole system to drill some pocket holes into this thing and get this thing secured to the legs. So that's gonna be the top side and that's what's gonna be sitting up against the live edge slab. From here, we're gonna attach the legs to the back side of the live edge slab and I decided that I wanted both of them to be inset from the edges about three inches. And then I measured out about an inch and five eighths from the backside. Because the backside was the most straight, I wanted that to be my reference point. And so you may notice that it might look as though it's not super flush with the ends here. That's because the, that end is not completely flat, completely level, and neither is the other side. It's got a little bit of an angle to it, which looks really good, but the back side of this table, that's what my reference is going to be. So I wanna make sure that both ends here are exactly one and five eighths. From there, very simple, just pre-drill your holes through the wood, inset them just a little bit if that's what you want to do. Um, and then I used a three inch screw it was just enough to grab into the live edge slab, but not go all the way through it. And then we'll just repeat the same process to the backside here. And as you can tell, there is a little bit of a tapered section on the backside of this, which I was very, very worried about, um, but turns out was not a problem seeing as how this is how I decided to attach the legs. It turned out I did not have to make any kind of miter cut or anything like that to um, compensate for that tapered section. I also bought these little footings here to kind of help offset some of the unleveled sections of this because I knew that this table was not completely level, nor is our floor. However, this did not work. Just a heads up, if you buy any kind of lumber like this from a hardware store, going in the end grain like this, the screws just did not work. I tried it several times on some scrap pieces, the, the screws just would not grab. So I had to completely nix this all together. And this was also about the time when we realized that the table was just a little bit too tall. So I went outside and cleaned off uh, about an inch, inch and a half from each of the legs. We had a few of these little felt sticky coaster things that you put on the bottom of furniture legs. Um, and I tried that and surprisingly it worked out perfect. I only put it on three of the legs. The back left one uh, did not put one on there, which is totally fine, uh, but it leveled out this table pretty much perfectly. So the overall height of the table ended up being 33 inches. The slab was about an inch and five eighths. And now it's time to move on to 
putting up our brand new mirror that we got at Target. I'll link this down in the description box below if that's something you wanna check out. And also if you're interested in learning how to attach a picture frame or even a mirror like this, check out our previous video, the hallway project that we did. In that video, I go over how we attach the picture frames in our hallway and I use that same method on this mirror. This mirror reluctantly came with a couple of wall anchors and the screws. The right side, I had to put a wall anchor in. The left side was conveniently um, right where a stud was, so I did not have to use a wall anchor. Now let me tell you, this mirror was really frustrating. This took us about 30 minutes to hang, simply because like most picture frames, they've got the little metal pieces that flip out. This did not have that. It was completely flush against the back side of the mirror. And so what I ended up having to do was put some painter's tape um, that lined up the top of the, the faceplate for where the screw was gonna be, um, and then also a vertical piece to show me where to line up both sides uh, with the screws and I was able to just finagle it right where it needed to go and we eventually got it. And then the last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna apply a coat of the maintenance oil by Rubio Mono Coat. This is the color Pure. This will help protect the finish but also give it kind of a shiny glistening finish as well. I believe this oil is used primarily for floors, but you can use it for furniture pieces like this table, and it will bring back the original finished color, the luster of that color on any floor or furniture piece. I'm using it in this case just to give it a little bit more of a shine. So I'll be very generous in applying this oil, and then I'm just gonna wipe it down with a paper towel. All right guys, thanks so much for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it or found it useful for any of your woodworking or DIY projects. And if you did, please hit that like button. It would really help us out a lot. And if you have any questions about what we did, let us know in the comments below. And finally, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified if you wanna see more projects just like this, woodworking or DIY. Also in that description box down below, we've got links to the Rubio Mono Coat, the finish that we used, and the oil, and any of these products that are available online, those will be linked down below as well. Again, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.